Welcome to Tips and Tricks with Curve 4. Curve is in its fourth generation of software development, and it has been a great toolset for press calibration for a wide variety of printer technologies. This video is intended for someone new to the software, who just wants to know the basic, fundamental process of calibrating a press to one of the G7 certification levels. In 2005, G7 was expanded to three new levels of compliance. For more on these, check the notes at the bottom of this video. The most basic function is to calibrate to G7 grayscale, and we can also compare against some of the industry standard color spaces while we're at it. Step 1 is to set your plate setter or the curves in your RIP to linear curves. This provides a clean start to a new calibration. Your press should also be in good physical shape, up to temp, and ready to print. Step 2 is to print the P2P51 calibration target. Any of the charts you might want to use with Curve are found in a folder in the same location as your Curve 4 app. On a Windows machine, it is in the Program Files folder. On a Mac, it is in the Applications folder. Curve 4 targets should include a recent folder with P2P in the name. The P2P51H is a popular target because it is laid out horizontally. This will make measuring a little bit faster. If your printing process is prone to variation, then you'd want to print several sheets of the P2P51 target throughout the run for averaging in Curve 4. In the Curve 4 app, go to the Calibrate module and click the New button to open up a new calibration. By default, the G7 method is already chosen, so stay on that. The Measure checkbox is for a very small number of rips that wants you to enter in your measured values. Most RIPs expect you to put in what we would call wanted values. For the vast majority of you, you'd want to leave the measured checkbox off. Next, you would measure into a run, which is again based on linear curves. Curve 4 makes it easy to directly drive your measuring instruments right in the software. Check the notes at the bottom of this video to see how to measure using your instrument. For now, I'm going to just drag and drop an already measured file into the measurements area. Click on any measurement to see the measured chart in detail. The first run is already named for you. You can rename these if you want. If you work with a press with a lot of variability, you'll want to take several measurements and allow the software to average them. In many cases, you can make use of the smooth checkbox to smooth the data. If a measurement is checked, it will be included in the average. Hovering over the measurement will give you the details about the measurement. Highlighting any measurement will allow you to see what the average delta E is between the one you've selected and the average of all of them. Similarly, the max delta E is the difference between the one that is highlighted and the worst for all of those in the measurement area. The idea is that you may want to see how far out some of these sheets are from the others, so that you can throw out the outliers. You want a collection that is a good representation of your press run. You can also change where this color coding kicks in. Go to the Preferences area, and you can set the warning level and the critical, what shows up in yellow, or red. Once you have your measurements, you can click directly to Create Curves, and output your control points. For those who want a simple video showing how Curve 4 works, you're done. Our algorithm produces these precise control points to dial your printing into line with G7 grayscale. You can export these values in a CGATS formatted text file and import them into your RIP. But let's look at some of these other features while we're here. With Analyze, you get to see the results of your measurements. Grayscale provides a visual comparison between what the K and the CMY should look like on the left versus what you measured on the right. If you are targeting a certain color space, this will show you how close you've gotten, whether you have passed according to the tolerances, and where you're off or red when you're outside of tolerances. If you are looking to verify if you're in compliance with color space, then you would want to use the Verify tool instead. Ink and Substrate gives you the numbers. The target values are here according to the specifications you have chosen. The sample is the average of your measurements. If your measurements include spectral values, 
then Curve will calculate density numbers using the spectral values. If you see an NA here, you probably brought in a measurement from somewhere else that only includes lab values. A lot of good information can be gleaned here on your substrate, your solids and overprints, the CMY, or 300% patch, and the CMYK, or 400% patch. When you get to run 2, more columns show up allowing you to see what changes were due to the variation of the second run. This looks at the solids, which Curve 4 generally has no control over, to see how much of a difference there was between runs. Very useful. There's also a 2D overhead view of the ramps, sometimes called a spider graph. This lets you know how close you are to hitting your aim points in a visual way. The G7 tab gives you several graphs. The neutral print density curve for K ink shows you a red line for what would represent an ideal G7 curve. A similar graph is here for CMY. Weighted delta L would ideally be in the middle along the zero line. Weighted delta CH is showing you a 2D look at how the grays are laid out in lab space. Think of this like a color think grapher laid on its side. Note that we would not be surprised to see things fall off close to 100%. A typical Curve 4 G7 calibration does not affect the 300% gray patch and does not affect the solids. So, we eventually taper off to where the press's natural behavior takes over. A TVI graph is here for those who want to see this. Let's look again at Create Curves. We default to 10 equally spaced control points. You can change to a set of 25 steps if you want more detail. You can add or subtract points based on what your rip is expecting. If you see a particularly irregular curve, you can always add a point that helps define the correction better. This 25 step preset just adds more sampling of the shadows and highlights. There are a lot of options here that might be more applicable to inkjets versus offset presses, or other special cases. Check the Curve 4 guide for specifics on any of these. I will just show you a couple that you should know about. The Gray Balance tab has a slider for gray correction feather off. Here, you can set the start and stop point for the software to reduce the amount of gray correction. A good place for this is 50. So at 50, the software will start reducing the correction it applies to creating an ideal gray balance. It is necessary for this to be tapered off so that there is a natural looking gradation to the printer's native black. You might slide this up to a higher number if you know that you print a very neutral black, or you're calibrating an inkjet, or something like that. These are the numbers you want to put into your RIP. To do that, you can export these as a text file, and just read them as you type them into your RIP interface. Manufacturers have given us their preferred control point sets, so if you have one of these, you can output the set that is specifically for your RIP. Some RIPs have different formats than the CGATs of text files, so you have these options here. When you go to make a second run, you can verify that Curve 4 has brought you into G7 compliance. Visually, your target and sample should look very close. The numbers will be green if the metrics pass tolerances for the G7 spec. I created the second run just like the first, by clicking the plus button. This is called verification, but you can change this. This is important. If you have a second run that is based on the first run, you need to indicate that in the Based On drop-down box. If you don't do this, the software assumes these are two separate runs with no connection to each other. If you base run 2 on run 1, then any further corrections will take the first run into account. Measure the P2P targets that you just printed from your second run. You should see a marked improvement here. If you are still slightly out, maybe your press was way out to begin with, you have the option to use the new set of control points to fine-tune your calibration even further. This is seldom necessary for most systems we find. Naturally, in going through this overview of basic Curve 4 functions, you've probably seen features and checkboxes that we did not discuss. 
Check the video notes below for more videos on these other features. There is a tech support feature built right into Curve. Be sure to save your calibration first. Go to File, Save, and then right click or control click the calibration name and choose Submit File to Feedback. Fill out the form describing the question or issue that you have. All of your measurements and settings are automatically included in this Calibrate file that gets included at the bottom. Submit sends this to us at Chromix, where we are quite responsive to your questions. The Curve 4 Guide PDF downloaded with the software does a great job of explaining the features. And you can always contact tech support at Chromix for any questions you have. Thanks for watching!